If you're watching this channel, you probably think outside the box already. Okay, that's what this channel is about. Looking at nutrition from a biochemistry standpoint and not just the everyday calories in, calories out standpoint. Well, here's another argument against calories in versus calories out, but it's really, really fascinating. Okay, this takes a look at whole food consumption versus processed food consumption and what it does in terms of your thermogenic response. Like, do certain foods actually burn more calories than other foods, even if they're of equal caloric value? So a really cool study that was published in Food and Nutrition Research, we're gonna break it down and give you some answers so that you can have a good application of this. But first, please do hit the red subscribe button if you're new to this channel. We've got new videos coming out daily. Okay, we're the leading intermittent fasting channel, one of the leading nutrition channels on YouTube, so I highly recommend it. Please hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications as well. I really appreciate that. Then after this video, check out ButcherBox down below in the description. They're a meat delivery service with grass-fed, grass-finished beef. They're what I utilize. Great prices, way better than the grocery store in a lot of ways, and quite honestly, just good quality stuff. So go ahead and check them out down below in the description. Thank you for supporting this channel, ButcherBox, and let's go ahead and dive into some science. So the study that was published in Food and Nutrition Research, it was cool because it really wanted to break down if a calorie was really a calorie. Okay, it wanted to measure the amount of energy that was produced from a given meal consumed. So what they did is they took two different meals. They took a whole food meal, which in this case it was whole grain dense bread. Not exactly good, but at least it's whole food for the case of this study. So whole grain dense bread with real cheddar cheese. Okay, whole food cheddar cheese. And they compared that to processed white bread with processed sliced cheese. Okay, and what they wanted to figure out here was if people consumed one food or the other, did they have a stronger caloric response, a thermogenic response after consuming said food? Okay, all the calories between the groups were completely equal. Okay, and the macronutrients, the protein, the fats, the carbohydrates were completely the same. The only thing that was different was the level of processing. Okay, so again, if you're thinking calories in versus calories out, these foods are created equal. They're the same calories, so they're going to elicit the same response. Well, let's dive into the results. Both groups rated the sandwiches as equally satisfying. Okay, the reason I say this is because people are going to come to this video and they're going to try to debunk it and they're going to try to throw me under the bus and they're going to say, well, no, the only reason one is blah, 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 blah is because they're not satiated. Well, both groups said they felt equally satiated. Okay, get that out of the way. The major difference between the two was the thermogenic response. The whole food sandwich burned 33 total calories, okay, to actually digest and break down the sandwich. Okay, that was close to 20%, 19.9% of its total energy value being burned, okay? Then the processed sandwich ended up only burning 17 calories, or 10.7% of its total caloric energy, its total value. Okay, that's less than half the energy that it takes to break down a whole food sandwich, to break down a regular processed sandwich. You see what I'm saying here? The point with this is that the processed food didn't take much energy to break down, so you're not getting a thermogenic response. And I know it sounds negligible. You're looking at, oh, 33 versus 17 calories, it's such a negligible amount. Uh, you factor this in over the course of the day with all your food, if all your food's processed, you are easily looking at one to 200 extra calories per day that you're not burning. That's the same as consuming one to 200 extra calories because your body's not burning it. And again, that doesn't sound like much to you. 100 calories extra a day over the course of a month, that's gonna be close to a pound of fat a month. That's 12 pounds of fat a year. If you creep up to 200 a day because you eat a lot of processed food, you do the math, you're creeping up on 20 pounds a year. This could be a big reason why obesity is on the increase because of processed food, not because we're just consuming more like some people are going to say. But this wouldn't be a typical Thomas DeLauer channel video if we didn't look at some of the biochemistry. So we'll make it simple, but why is this happening? Well, it has to be somewhat speculated, but the biggest thing is the refinement, right? When you look at processed food, it's refined. You lose the vitamins, you lose the minerals. And in this particular case, because it was a highly starchy meal, I'm gonna say that probably has something to do with the B vitamins and the lack of fiber. Okay, without the fiber, it digests easier, so you have less mechanical digestion, which takes calories, to break it down. And you also end up having less of the B vitamins that allow glucose metabolism to properly function. Okay, therefore, you might have an increase in blood sugar, but it's never actually getting utilized by the cells 
because that B vitamin isn't there to allow the proper metabolism of the glucose. So you just raise your blood sugar without actually getting a caloric burn from it. Food, glucose, fats, whatever, they all cause our body heat to go up, a thermogenic response. It's the thermic effect of food and it's kind of like free money. It's free weight loss. Whenever you eat, you have a little bit of a thermic effect. So processed food doesn't get you that thermic effect as much. The second piece also has to do with refinement. Okay, but it looks at it more from a mechanical piece. If you take something like um, milled grain or something like that and you refine it and continue to refine it, eventually you're going to end up with something that's quite frankly easy to digest because the refining has already digested it for lack of a better term. This means it's gonna absorb really easily, which may sound good to some people because nutrient absorption is best, but no, you're not having the mechanical digestion occur. Therefore, you're not burning as many calories. Then the third thing we have to look at is the secondary metabolism piece. Okay, enzyme formation. See, all these little things that add up. The formation of enzymes, building enzymes to actually break down this food. And then over the long haul, one could argue that if you eat a lot of processed food, you start to lack the enzymes that you would need to normally break down good healthy foods. Okay, again, looking at very simple things in the world of like whole grains, if you switch from whole grains to white bread and you eat white bread for a year, well, then maybe you're gonna lose the ability to break down the whole grains. And then you wonder why when you go back to whole grains, you feel bloated, right? Same kind of concept, because you're losing the enzyme activity, which, by the way, takes calories to form those enzymes. So we look at this entire equation. Now, again, an argument that could come in is, okay, the white bread's higher glycemic. Okay, so the high glycemic foods are gonna absorb faster, and it's not apples to apples, because you're looking at high glycemic foods. That's my point. Okay, so the same people that are gonna make that argument and say that it's, oh, it's high glycemic, so that's not apples to apples. Those are the same people that are making the argument that a calorie is a calorie. So you just completely just kick yourself because now you're saying that it's not equal, but in the same conversation, you're telling me that they are equal. So whether it's because it's high glycemic or not, it is not treated the same in the body. A calorie is not always a calorie, but for the sake of weight loss, for the sake of the big picture, you should still pay somewhat attention to calories. Don't throw them away. If you're looking at massive weight loss, if you're looking, yes, the calories are still gonna matter. It's still your fuel tank, it's still your energy, okay? But if you're getting granular and you really wanna focus on what's happening in your body, you need to look at the secondary metabolism that's occurring here. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you tomorrow.